Are you having a hard time figuring out how to serve your guests something that is safe and beautiful at the same time? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a charcuterie cup so that you and your guests can feel comfortable and just having these new ideas in ways to entertain this season. So I'm Jordan and this is Amazing Grace Boards and let's jump right into the video. Okay, let's jump right into the ingredients. So the first thing you'll need is your cup. So this is a five ounce cup in a pack of 50 I got on Amazon. I also got these bamboo skewers on there as well. So um, because obviously this is really tall, I'll just cut them because I do like that they're longer. It's just for other things, I can definitely get the height that I prefer. I also have just regular like bamboo forks and then I have my own toothpicks that I will use if needed. So let's move on to cheese. So the cheeses that I'm going to use are all Italian themed. So most of these items, if not all of them are Italian based. So you can have this with a beautiful red wine and it would go really well for your guests. So these are just mini fresh uh, mozzarellas. So these come in a little bag of a ton of packs so I don't have to waste them once I open a container but you can also just grab these little individual packs. This is from Trader Joe's. This is a creamy Toscano cheese soaked in Syrah. So I'm going to use the edge, the edge here, this little triangle. So I'm going to cut them all and I'll show you how I do that but I'm only going to use this, this corner here. And um, moving on, so there's only two cheeses because clearly we can't fit very much in there. I also have uncured salami, so this is also Italian. And then this Chianti red wine artisan salami. So it's a whole full salami that I'll probably cut up in cube and put in this. And I'm planning on probably rolling this so that there's visually two different um, presentations for the meat. So on to our little sides, I'm gonna have some green olives, as well probably as a cornichon pickle, which they're just baby pickles, they're cute and adorable. So for the vegetable, I got this also at Trader Joe's. Most of this is from Trader Joe's, but here is a, it's an antipasto, but it's more, I believe, Greek. I'm just looking for these tiny little red drop peppers in here that I'm gonna use on a toothpick. So I also have uh, tomatoes and then fresh basil. The fresh basil, really, I was trying to get it as a decorative piece to add on at the end. They're huge. Those leaves are like really, really big. So I have to figure out how I'm going to kind of pull the whole look together with something green. We'll see if I can do that. Uh, and then lastly, just two crackers. So I have a long rectangular cracker here and then an Italian breadstick as well from Trader Joe's. So. This is all that you'll need to build this Italian mini charcuterie cup. So let's start to build this. Okay, I'm going to attempt this in real time. I know that there's a few viewers who are asking for that to see how long it takes me, how I go back and forth. So I laid everything out, everything so that it goes a lot faster as I assemble. As I was taking things out, these are the Italian breadsticks from Trader Joe's. Those are humongous. I've never used them before, so I'm not going to use those actually. So here, as you can see, these are breadsticks that I got at Whole Foods and I just have a ton in my cracker section in my pantry. So I'm gonna use that instead. I think that just fits well. That's gonna take up a huge amount of space in the cup. So I also have the cracker here and then all my meats out, which I'll show you how I'm slicing, which is why I didn't do it before. So with these cups, um, I have a video out that is about charcuterie cones. I'll make sure to link it for you to watch because that's another option for you to serve to your guests. But I placed nuts at the bottom of the cup just so it kind of brings everything up and lifts it up out of the cup more. So first we're gonna try without it. And then if that's not working, I will probably add tomatoes at the bottom and not nuts. So let's go let's figure out how we're gonna start so first i'm definitely going to figure out how tall i want these crackers 
So I'm gonna start breaking them off here. And let's see, I'll probably use, I wonder if I'll use one and then a cracker. That might look right. So I'm gonna start with one first. And um, I have my different Q-tip options, my skewers, and I have the bamboo sticks, which I'll need to grab a pair of scissors to cut to the size that I'd like. I think what I'll start with first is cutting all of these uh, meats and cheeses so that you can see how I get that all set up. So I'm going to cut this cheese. Now I want to make sure I have the right height as well. So I think I might actually cut it pretty far back. I assumed I would only cut it here, but I think so that they can get a good slice of cheese. I'll cut it about this area. And I will save this for a different board. So here we go. So I'm just literally going to slice it this way and get as many out as I can. So we wanna keep that triangle shape. So the thinner the better so you can get as many out as possible but at the same time you don't want the cheese to break it's not too brittle but the thinner you slice the less durable it is you can't tell but when I'm cutting it you can see some of the liquid from the wine shooting out from the cheese it's even got this like sticky sweet smell to it which smells incredible usually want to leave cheese out for a half an hour at least to room temperature before you serve your cheese. It just sets so much better and it tastes incredible after it's had some time to rest. Now I might as well move these over to our cheese board. I'm going to cut the salami as well. So I'm going to do I think the way I'm going to is just quarter it since these will go on a stick. And really, I just need one for this amount. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Maybe I guess I'll test another one just to see which one looks prettier. I'm not cutting them very even either, which is unfortunate. <laughs> this up. Let's see. All right, well, we'll use the best that we can find from here. And then um, we have this and this. So we are all set for that. So now we can really visualize how we want to put this. Oh, that looks pretty. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with this hands in between as they get sticky and just don't that one got too short so there we go and cheese there let's add one cheese I have a point So I want to make sure I break up the color because I can see a lot of white in this section. So that's where we'll use something like a skewer. So we definitely want to put something tall enough. So I'm going to use the scissors. Hopefully this is the right size. Let's see. So I'm going to, let's see, we will do a piece of meat. I say we do one of our mozzarellas. And 
and a tomato. So let me get a paper towel. So see, I'd rather have this shorter than that. So I'm going to cut it just a tad smaller. Okay. Let me try putting this at the bottom. Let's see if it'll help. Yep, so it helps stand it up a little bit. It'll be two tomatoes, but at least now you can visually see the tomato, which is always fun. So um, let's try this skewer it this direction instead of down because we want these parts to be sitting up. So I'm going to do one cornichon pickle. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this one. I put less pressure when I push it down. Oh, let's see, it's breaking. Okay, let's try a regular toothpick. Sometimes that happens, but here's our problem. Well, might be a little too short. So we can push it up to the very top and see if it sits. Yep, it sits great. Perfect. And now we have our little salami roll. So I think I'm literally just gonna roll it and get a pretty top view at the top. And maybe I'll stick it in between right here. So lastly, we have these incredible piece little dropped. I don't want to prick these, but I'm trying to figure out how I can use this to... Okay, that won't work. So we're going to use another toothpick before we ruin this beautiful teardrop. And I'm going to use a yellow so that we get a pop of color. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And we're just going to place it right in on this side. Get it to lay the way I like it to be viewed. Okay, and then lastly, I'm building one because obviously, if I make changes, I'd like them to all be unison. So, see, this it's really big. I mean, I guess I could possibly pull it off and let it sit at the very back. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, let's see how that goes. Oh. Actually, that's kind of cute. But I was thinking something more small. Wow, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna try recreating the next one, but seeing how I, I'm gonna try and tight roll this a lot tighter. Now, and so we're going to get a skewer. We're going to cut it pretty short. Let's see, yeah, perfect. And we started with a meat and mozzarella, and then two tomatoes to help it stand up a little bit more. Which actually, see, I can push this up, I just realized. So, I'm going to get one of these. See, I didn't need a second tomato on that one, which is helpful. Um, I need to get more pickles. Okay. So we're gonna use this way too quick. Pickle first, all of a second. All right, 
and then I'm going to push it up just a bit. So have it lay right here on this end, and we're going to do a little teardrop. Peppers, and I'm going to do a red, and then the colored one on the top. I found these on Amazon as well. They're expensive, but I figured this is a good alternative for me just to try these out. They're so small on this one. I wish they were a larger. Maybe I'll just do two. All right. So there's that. And now that I see this, I could leave it a little bit wider. All right. Here is our, pull this pickle out. So this one I'm gonna try a different, this one I'm gonna try a different uh, approach to the basil and see how I like that better. So see this little sprig here? It doesn't really have a stem, which is somewhat challenging to uh, get, but there's that. So now that I look at it, I really like this. So I think I'm gonna exchange that big one for a smaller option. So I found the sprig on here. So I guess it's worth it to get something from Trader Joe's with a little bit. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna also lift this up. So I'm going to add the sprig. Back. It really won't lean up against anything. I'm also going to find a better piece. That one had a little bit of, uh, I'd say it's dirt. It's just. Small point. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. I found a sprig that I think might work well. So I'm just adding it kind of towards the back a little. I'm trying to see if I can pull this a little bit forward so you can pop of green. All right. So I've got to move my olive forward and my peppers back. Pull my olives up. Sometimes I think I might need a little tweezer for these mini ones. So see, for whatever reason in this one, it's not standing up perfectly straight, which is fine. So I'm gonna use this to help it kind of have stability. So you're welcome to do that with any nuts or any other, you know, another piece of salami because I'm sure people want that too, or a mozzarella. Whatever it is that you wanna use is extra down at the base. I think that would be perfect. So, that is a charcuterie cup. I'm not gonna build this one <laughs> because I think these came out beautiful. So I'm gonna stick with this since I'm not gonna be serving these today. I figured that this is what we'll be left with.